Welcome to Drawing Room and to the um, In Conversation event with um, Hardeep and Al. Uh, so Hardeep is the recipient of uh, Drawing Room's Bursary Award for this year. Um, and he was nominated by Kirsty Ogg, the director of uh, Bloomberg New Contemporaries. Um, so the award is intended um, for an artist who is actually based outside of London to have a platform in London to use the resources that are unique to London to um, experiment, uh, do some reading, uh, and produce some work. So um, what um, Hardeep's done is he's, he's used the gallery as an incubator of ideas. You can see there's various reading material over there, and he's also, as is fairly obvious, produced the work that you see around you. So it's very much a kind of studio um, scenario rather than a, an exhibition is, is what he's done here. So just to say a little bit about um, Hardeep as well, he was born in Birmingham and he now lives and works in Glasgow, having graduated um, with an MFA from Glasgow School of Art in 2013 uh, with the support of a Lieberman scholarship and he was selected for Bloomberg New Contemporaries in 2013 and the Catlin Art Guide in 2014. He's had an exhibition at Castlefield Gallery in Manchester, and um, he's done a public um, art exhibition um, at the former Camp Coffee Factory for the Glasgow International in 2014. And um, he's selected for the collective's 2015 Satellites Program uh, for Emergent Artists in Scotland, and he's got a forthcoming exhibition at David Dale Gallery in Glasgow. So, um, one thing that we is quite important for Drawing Room is our study and our reading lists, and Hardeep has put together a really fantastic reading list, and we've, we've acquired some of the titles for our study. Um, and there's a range of interesting titles, um, something like, um, for example, George Bataille's lesser known um, work, the, the Accursed Share. Um, then there's books by the anthropologist Michael Teisig, um, Susan Tom Sontag's Against Interpretation, uh, fascinating history of severed heads by Francis Larson, as well as underground comics by bloggers Stefan um, Sadler. So some of those titles are in, in our library, and all of the reading lists that we, the artists that are in our programme, put together are then put on our website under our resources. Um, so. He, one thing that's, um, I, think I want to start by, I don't, I hope that you kind of noticed as you came in, um, there's a very, there's a modest drawing, A4 drawing, um, on the other wall, um, and I want to just talk a little bit about that as a, as a by way of uh, an introduction. So, um, it's actually a picture of an art gallery. Yeah. And it, it, you can tell that because it says actually says art gallery mm -hmm. above the door um, that is pictured. Um, and then there's a headless narrator who's holding up a piece of paper on which are written the following words. The group looked at from the outside comes into view as a social object, lending by its appearance and by the apparent processes that go on inside it, credence uh, to the organistic um, illusion. There is a mirage as one approaches closer. There is no organism anywhere. Then in the picture, um, outside the gallery, he has written the words working class. Um, and the same character appears outside, looking into the gallery, a question mark taking the place of his head. Then there are footprints across the gallery which link the two figures. Um, and then there's a mysterious sculptural object in the center, which appears in various of Hardeep's works, something between a, a sort of layered object and a tomb-like object which is um, topped with hair, cascading hair perhaps. Um, can I ask you a little to explain the drawing and why you chose to position it there? Um, I think it was, it's supposed to say working glass, so it gets confused and um, the cartoon character Although I haven't figured it out yet because the narrative is being developed kind of uh, not in a serial way. Um, 
partly because I don't make comics, um, but I use the form, so they tend to be exploded comics, I guess. Um, it, it kind of harks back to, for the sake of this in conversation, um, memory of um, seeing um, punks break glass windows with bricks, basically. Um, so he gets working glass and working class confused because of, on the, as an advert on, on, the, on the window. Um, the character is a male character and he adopts kind of skinhead uh, attire, um, but he's headless as well, so he's kind of open. Um, with, the, with the text that can, you know, uh, the commentary kind of doesn't come from his mouth, uh, from his boots sometimes, so it's displaced uh, address, the, the voice is kind of like, you know, all over the place. Um, it's positioned there because I assume that's when people are going to come in today. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I mean... Um, is the text something that you've written or is the text taken from somewhere? Um, a lot of these ones, I mean, they're all quotes uh, from some of the things that you mentioned in the reading list. Um, partly because I was asked to do a reading list. Mm. Um, and also, yeah, just to try and, and because I, it might come across quite desperate, that reading list. Um, but because I'm not an academic, I don't tend to formalise any of my reading in the same way an academic would. Mm. So um, I don't have to write a thesis, for example, so I don't have to structure in that way. Um, I'm trying to bridge my kind of associations with that uh, writing in a, in a kind of way that's um, the kind of il illustrative annotations that combine um, imagery which might be private or come born out of private experiences mm. um, and uh, ethnographic kind of like material. So journalism, research that's already been out there that I've just picked up. Mm. Um, so what you've produced here is like, as you say, it almost feels a bit like that idea that you described of, of an exploded comic. Yeah. So you've, um, it's like a sort of collage of, of imagery. Um, and maybe you could talk, though, a little bit about the role, since we're in, in the drawing room, the role that the works, the small works on paper play. So they're works in ink. And you make a lot of these drawings and you've talked about possibly putting them together as a book. Um, but but does, at the moment you have them kind of pasted onto the screens and, and within the graffitied um, work. So maybe you could just say a little bit about the role that they play. Um, well, when I got here, I kind of uh, started to figure out how to use it as a studio because I don't have a studio normally, so this is unusual. Um, so I tend to work quite small um, in my home, <coughs> which means small paper and kind of detail and you're hunched over a desk and you kind of get isolated and lost in this kind of thing. Um, so I started off with those um, and again harking back to the reading list I included in that list a book that I published with a few friends a few years ago which took the form of a comic but as experimental as I could, could have been at the time I thought well that's, that's, that might be good to kind of return to um, and we're talking seven years um, so that was the idea, I started to lay these things out, use a space to be able to kind of like, in a sense, build up a storyboard. Um, but my knee-jerk kind of uh, reaction was to want to make it as, as non-linear as possible, um, so that it can be edited for an installation or something. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I, um, with the assistance of a friend, Stefan um, Sadler, who does make comics, um, and is kind of associated with more underground kind of singing, I guess. Um, blew up some of these imagery uh, using spray paint, um, which I've not which I've not done before. So, and there's an there's a funny video that I'm kind of working on, and where he's filming me, <coughs> kind of talking about that process whilst we're in the kind of heat of the moment kind of thing, um, which I'm working with. I'm trying to combine that with footage of other stuff. Um, born out of research specific to being in London, mm. um, which we can talk about as well. 
Um, Do you want to talk a bit? Because you've yeah. made visits to the Imperial War Museum. Yeah, so there's like, a, I mean, there's, for like a few years now, there's been a, a, a fixation on a character or, or the idea of a British Sikh soldier. And I think it came from just reading the paper a few years ago and hearing about a uh, place like National, National Army Museum trying to kind of um, remember certain contributions. Um, and one of those revolves around a kind of epic battle where 21 Sikhs defended like a, a fort, a British Sikh, sorry, defended a fort um, on the Afghan border and all got martyred for it. So it was remembered for the first time in 2012 or something. And my interest is in that is to be well, well, what, you know, how does that own, how is that material, how is that kind of, who owns that, you know, in a sense. Um, so there's a lot of like research on internet now, which I'm starting to kind of trying to incorporate into my work. But anyhow, I've, over the years I've developed a, a kind of a cartoon kind of like character to, uh, to kind of, I guess, um, take on in this parallel world. Uh, some of the ideas that I've been throwing out there. So it's, it's like throwing your voice, I guess. It's just, um, or like quoting, it's, mm. um, or an alter persona type thing, or even a self portrait. So the, the, the image is, um, yeah, it just kind of stands in to, to draw it. Mm. So that's, that's something that's going on. So that, that explains some of these images. So what, what we see around is some of these are actually. <coughs> are your images, yeah. um, and then others are actually made by the graffiti at the, um, Hadeep invited a graffiti artist to come in over the weekend, which is why it still smells quite strongly of spray paint, <laughs> hope you're all surviving, um, and um, he was basically showing you his technique. Um, yeah, and he, you know, it's just a case of, I mean, I, I realised soon afterwards that I could just do it on my own, but I needed to trick myself into thinking that, oh, I need to see someone else do it. I don't know whether that was just to be able to like, uh, share the making process because it's more fun as well. Mm. Or whether mm. that was just because, you know, yeah, it's like, you don't, I mean, and, it's, and it wasn't really confirmed whether it's going to come or not, so. Um, but then, <laughs> but then you were saying that within, there were obviously a certain rules and ways that the graffiti artists use their aerosol spray and then you're, actually trying to kind of create your own particular language so you're actually starting rather than with a, a hard black outline you're actually yeah. using the colour maybe first and, and you've actually talked about using your fingers to kind of move the paint around I yeah think. and there's like the whole thing is like the distance between like the can and the wall as well which you don't get when you're drawing mm. so it's kind of uh, a removed you know layer and uh, more chance I guess involved and a lot of it's, it's I don't know. It's um, I mean I did these in a couple like in a day or so, and then I'd go home and then I forget about it because it happened so quickly. But it makes such a dramatic kind of in, in, in impact. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how, whether it could work in an installation um, and home in this way, or you know. Um, mm. But um, so, but um, and your attraction to the graffiti form, to the aerosol spray, and to this particular kind of idiom. Is that it also seems to be related to your interest, for example, in, in knitting. So maybe you could talk a little bit about your um, collaboration with your mother, who yeah. has knitted habitually, and then you, you, had, you came upon the idea of actually collaborating with her um, to, to yeah. do some works. And there's actually a very large yellow booty thing there that is that she's knitted. Yeah, so there's like, I think I'm in the slideshow. seen some of the work of images here. In the slideshow as well, there's some of it. So, um, I guess I got interested in that because I wanted to um, somehow kind of, well, first she kind of knits anyway, and she's been doing it and giving me these odd things, and then over the time I kind of... When you say it. giving you odd things, things as to in, wear. As in, yeah, things to wear. Like, <laughs> that you didn't want to wear. Well, I didn't mind, because yeah. I wasn't, I was that way inclined. You know, I wasn't, you know, so, mm. and, she, and they're really good, so, um, eventually kind of got customised things, and then thought, oh, well, it'd be good to make some work. But I, I thought, 
how it could be framed, I would say, they're all titled, you know, such and such referenced by my mum mm. as a thing to kind of, um, it's, it seemed like an economical way of doing something collaborative, but also um, I wanted to invite discourse around uh, the gap between us, so there's a cultural one, there's a generational one, and there's a, a linguistic one because we don't have this, we don't, well, we don't share the same language, um, which is not uncommon. And I thought, well, that's kind of something that I'm not really hearing about in art school um, because. Um, no. uh, I am not exactly so, your mother speaks sense. Punjabi and, so, and you don't speak Punjabi. So. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it's quite. Um, I guess it's a, a hangover of a kind of Punjabi or patriarchal kind of like culture where, um, yeah, and then and also it's to do with short term kind of like immigration where, uh, particularly in the Midlands, there's kind of waves of, well, the world, world waves of people coming in and building, setting up communities to the point where they didn't really need to assimilate or, um, acculturate fully um, and I always wondered whether that's a kind of passive resistance towards the dominant thing or is it whether it's just like kind of ignorance mm. you know, never know, so. and, but your father um, because he worked he spoke English is that right yeah that's right. but your mother didn't no okay. mm. but how do you I mean one um, in one of your videos, in the in the Jojo Boys, so Hardeep also, um, and an important part of his practice is making videos, which are similarly uh, sort of collage effect. So within a video, you will include, for example, some footage from a, a video made of Hardeep when he was seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, then there'll be um, sections uh, which are outtakes from situations a bit like this, um, yeah. sort of interpretive videos about your practice, um, and then the element that you interject, um, which is um, like a sort of documentary style, um, where you're um, talking through ideas. So the, the video becomes like a collage of all yeah. of these different um, things. But in, in, in Jojo Boys, um, you actually say at some point, um, does it, what does it mean to be, you know, a, a British Asian artist? Do, do, does that mean something? Do I, you sort of ask the question about whether you, you should be responding to that. Does that matter yeah. that you are a British <coughs> Asian artist? Sometimes I kind of let the, particularly in the public facing commission type projects, um, I let the people do the interpretation first and then react towards it and that was something that I kind of remember reacting towards. Mm -hmm. um, but also just in the build up of that video and that kind of one take situation seemed to kind of like convey something. Um, but the project was also about a kind of corporate image, um, a colonial kind of image relating to Glasgow because that was one of the premises of the project that it had to kind of refer to the history of it. Um, and the actual name Jojo Boy comes from a character from a book written by Jay Garner, who's in the audience as well, who could probably talk about it later if he wants to do. <laughs> and he's a, he's a kind of character who has a quite, uh, I guess it's almost a Creole type identity, uh, but he's like a, a subject who has an affair with a, a soldier who is a character on this corporate logo, which the work was about. So this is the Camp so, Coffee logo. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it gets quite complicated. I mean, and then the video was, that was shown in between readings from a novel by Jake. So it was quite um, specific. The edit was quite specific, but mm. the footage could be reused. I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it is, yeah, so it's like a, it's almost like a drawing, the, the, the equivalent to the drawing style in that sense where they're, Collage, and then there's multiple address, and then the mistakes are left in, so so it has a documentary type of thing, or mm. the mistakes kind of prompt more questions or problems to resolve or something. Um, yeah, I mean, what it seems to be um, very definitely against is a, a, a polished presentation. So there's a kind of rawness to it, and um, 
the mist- as you say, the mistakes are there. It's t- done in one take. And at one point when you're talking, you're sort of presenting the idea of traffic completely drowns out your voice. Yeah. And that's, it's kind of um, anti this kind of polished commodity kind of presentation. Yeah, I think like it's good to, the process to never really, well it has to stop at some point, but mm-hmm. it's good to, to kind of keep it going as much as possible. So with like immediate tools, immediate mediums like drawing, which is quite immediate for me because I'm doing so long, and quite economical. And now with video, <coughs> it being so kind of affordable, what, to, what I can do with it, I've never been able to draw and edit video at the same time. And having said that, it's not like high production video, mm. but it's you know, HD and it's kind of, you can use lenses which are cinematic nowadays, um, and then you can export it to the internet. And, you know, so it's like, couldn't do that like six years ago, really, mm-hmm. with, the same, with, with that money. So it's um, responding to that as well. Mm-hmm. And then also social media, the way work kind of accumulates there and, you know, copies kind of like preceding like originals and then, so, you know, this is how things circulate, but I don't want to get too drawn into that, but it's just a, another um, occurrence, which I don't mind seeing as a thing to uh, mm-hmm. add to. But what do you do? You, I mean, do you like the idea of your work being uh, presented on on the net, on the web, as opposed to people coming to a gallery and, and seeing it in that context? Do you have what? What do you feel about that? Do you think it's important that people kind of actually have yeah, the chance to see the work in the flesh? Or I think so, but I think like it's difficult now for me to assume the position of of someone who isn't involved in the arts. Um, mm. So that's probably why I kind of enjoy working with someone like my mum who do, doesn't have a kind of interest in that. Mm. Um, or like people like Stefan who, who work alongside it or obliquely with it. Um, yeah. So um, I think I'll always, re- and then there's some things that are autobiographical. So I feel like it can go as far as it wants to on the internet mm. in an uncontrolled way, but I'll still have some kind of autonomy over that kind of material because it's, you know, it's quite, yeah, it's quite personal, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the, um, the, the characters and the, the content of your, your drawings and of the larger kind of graffitied images there, these are, these are characters and motifs and symbols that you've, you've, you said that you've been drawing since you were a boy in your bedroom and you've kind of... So <laughs> for some time, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, quite a while back. And um, you've kind of perfected these kind of characters that now populate your, your drawings. Um, so that they become, can you say a little bit about it? the idea that you, that this, is, this is a character that you've created, which is the headless characters we've discussed. And this character's rarely grounded, this character is usually kind of wafting. And not only are they headless, but also. Um, they're not kind of anchored to the ground. Yeah. Can um, you say something about it? I guess yeah. like, um, I guess within like a kind of like cartoon, like landscape or, or whatever, there's room for a lot of like um, play and a lot of metaphor. And a lot of the drawings have, in the past have been almost like the one that you see in the front, like fictive kind of parallels to the space. Mm. Um, and then there are guides, so the, so the commentary is there giving extra information. Um, so again, it's all about interpretation, I think. Mm. It's adopting the form of, say, uh, some of the graphic satire that I've looked at, at glance at, and some of the comics that I've glanced at, but I don't read comics. I don't like, you know, um, know so much about Cruikshank or, or Gilray. Um, you know, but it's, it's kind of timeless and Mm. And that form kind of is, you know, it still exists and it's, it's the, the function is the same, but it still seems to kind of like crop up as a as a thing that um, needs kind of like realigning in terms of like what is acceptable mm. um, and then what constitutes offence, um, particularly with a turban of character. So it's like, you know, it's like, I'm not really, I mean, the, the, I don't know, it's like, but, I mean, you are, you did have that similar thing in your work, is you seem to be really trying to push what is acceptable. Um, 
and you're using the, the form of the parody to do that. So you can, because, and you're using humour, obviously. Yeah. The work is, has a, so humour is, is a strategy for actually taking more risks, being more transgressive in what you're trying to kind of tackle. Yeah. I guess there's like, you could say that it's kind of, um, it can be that, but it also can be quite a defensive or an evasive manoeuvre. Which I, don't, um, like yeah. In, yeah, which I don't mind uh, mm -hmm. being associated with because um, what you were saying before about a kind of maybe um, uh, the work not being polished or something, mm -hmm. you know, or there being a kind of like high and low thing going on. Um, I think I'm just, I think like, especially when I associate personal stuff with that style, that I want to implicate myself as much as I can. Mm. Um, but I also try and use as much of the interpretive stuff that goes on um, as well. So I'm kind of complicit with a multiple, like, but, you know, but multiple things. They're all separate to me, I don't mm. know. Um, you're tr yeah, I mean, you're trying to find definitely your own, very much your own voice, which is coming from who you are and how, you're, how you've been brought up. Yeah. And, but then, as you say, you're also, you know, you're, you're um, influenced by a certain number of received ideals as well. Yeah, I guess it's like this whole thing about uh, like post-colonial uh, literature and what that is now and what, you know, um, I mean, I guess I was asked to do an exhibition, well, the one at Castlefield, in the context of it being this Asia Triennial Manchester mm. thing. So it was, it's not unproblematic that, but it's, you know, it's, it, there's this thing, there's this dual thing about, oh, we need representation, but we can't be politically correct as well. It's kind mm. of a weird thing. So it's like, um, okay, that gives me the license to maybe kind of, you know, be a post colonial artist, but I, that doesn't mean that I have to kind of stick to the same stuff. I don't know, mm. it's just what it feels like. I think it should just be as, as many different, a range of kind of like human kind of experiences and emotions as possible. Because mm -hmm. um, that's, what, that's what it is, I mean. Um, there is a thing about kind of equality and like, because again, it's like I've been fortunate to go through art school for free pretty much, mm -hmm. um, due to like, you know, funding and stuff. So it's about like, Oh, I'll be in that situation. I might as well try and do something which I could, which I would like to see. You know. Yeah. Maybe this is a good time. Um, do you want? To, would you like to show one of your oh, yeah. some of the video? Um, well, or we can show some. Um, yeah, maybe you could just show the one that we talked about yeah. in relation to that to this project, which is a public art project where I made kind of an alternate. Versions of this camp copy logo. Um, so the, the story is that um, it was it was a kind of coffee substitute which was made around Victorian time, but it was in liquid form, and the logo originally depicted like a Scottish Highlander um, being served the product by I guess don't really know it's just a man uh, an Asian man with a turban, and then. That logo lasted until post-war, and then it got changed to one, uh, one where he's still kind of serving him, but he's empty-handed, so it's kind of servile, but kind of not doing anything. And that opened itself to like, lots of interpretation, until the 90s, where we've got the current one, where it's like, um, they're both just sitting down and enjoying, enjoying the thing, so it's, so it's kind of like it charts a kind of weird political correctness, but it's still kind of the, the, the current one's really confusing, probably more confusing than the original one. So that's what it was about, and I kind of made my own versions of that logo and installed them on the road where the original factory stood. So it's been demolished now and sold off, I think, to another company, um, just in the eastern of Glasgow, a kind of nondescript place. Um, yeah, so I can, I can show that. It's about 12 minutes long.
and just want me to swivel about. Just the edge of faith in that. Uh, so You're not, not really in focus. Just focus it. I'm just gonna read out like some emails, I think, for a bit. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I'll do that thing over there, I think. So if, if you stop it now. Okay. <laughs> um, How hard do you stop it? Oh, you just press the button. Like the stop button. Oh, man, I'm not. I'm not as good as I used to be. Dear Hardy, good to hear from you. The project sounds intriguing. I did quite, I did quite a lot of research on Hector McDonald for the Devil's Paintbrush, but I must, I must confess that I made up quite a lot of it too. His life remains obscured by scandal and hearsay. After his suicide, the governor of Salem sent a letter to the colonial secretary, secretary giving a list of offences he was accused, but none of them appear to have been properly investigated. Um, and as there was no court martial, as there was no court martial, never properly answered. Jojo Boy is entirely my invention, though there is a reference to burger youths in the letter. But I did want to explore race, colonialism, sexuality and the matters of the human heart through uh, imagined relationships. I'd be more than happy to talk about Hector and the world he found himself in, if it is indeed him on the Camp Coffee label. And we can't even be certain of that. It probably dates back to the um, Afghanistan cam campaign, well, uh, as this would have been the only occasion, to my knowledge, parentheses, that he would have served with Sikh soldiers. So much falls through the history of, from so much falls through the gaps of history. That's why we need fiction. We might wonder who the Sikh was, what his story was, but with with best regards, Jake. Drawing on like the um, like the prince reminded me of like a time. <laughs> <laughs> Reminded me of a time in like childhood, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was this like weird project in English class where um, I must have been about like like eight years old or something. Um, where for like a, for like three or four weeks we would um, for like three or four weeks we would like draw like um, like. Um, we would make these kind of like series of stories, of like a creative like workshop, like to make stories, like you know, creative stories. And for like series of weeks, we would like each work on our own stories, basically. And then after that, they would all get kind of bound, like stapled together and stuff, put in a box. And then for like another series of weeks, we would like go uh, to that box and like pick out someone's story and read it. And then we'd do that like kind of for like five weeks, so we'd like read each other's stuff. But in that time, in that time, for some reason, I just started like um, just writing swear words like on people's books, like like fuck, like shit, you know. I think even cunt. I would have like known about back then. Um, You're and, aware of the cunt back yeah. then. Uh, and um, yeah, I knew it was wrong, but like I just. I kind of feel like I felt like I wanted to get away. I wanted to be caught, basically. Not wanted to get away, but I wanted to be caught. And uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think over like a period of like the five weeks, I eventually like, well, people started noticing swear words in their books appearing. And then, it, yeah, eventually I, got, I just had to kind of own up to it. But um, your parents, parents get called in and my, stuff. My dad had to come in and like just, it's kind of weird though. But I guess it's like, it's more embarrassing for him because it's like, he's responsible for me knowing all these words. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> well, maybe your older brother as well, maybe. Did your older brother swear a lot? I think so. Pick it up. Can I pick it up? Where's the ears? What the? Wonder what you look like. Shall I do it? Yeah. Yes, la. <laughs> The rabbit force go like this, they go like that and if the bed like that, then they come to me. Do that again. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Hardy, thanks for sh oh, thanks for uh, thanks so much for sharing your work with me. I love the playfulness of it. It's strange. I'm just writing an essay on the emotional and sexual repression of imperialism. <laughs> And there is a strange sense of an Im immature game being played all the time in the empire. See Henry no Newbolt's poem, Retire Lamparda, in brackets, play up, play up, play up, play the game. Let's find a way of continuing this conversation. We are, after all, descendants of the characters on the bottle. I'm a southerner, really, but my, dad, my, dad's, family, my dad's family was Scottish. Best regards, Jake. Each one like will have um I might sit over here. Each one uh, will have like each one will like, have a like um an incomplete like hangman game. I just thought like it was the kind of a nice like way, immediate way of um of um, suggesting like something like both fun and a bit dark at the same time um, and like yeah to kind of point to, to like point towards the um, 
what I would say, like, is a sadistic, perhaps, impulse amongst, say, you know, youth, children, perhaps, or primitive, like, you know, or primitive states, you know, being in a primitive state, um, impulses that you have to kind of um, alter something or to destroy something or to, like, um, um, you know, market kind of like territory or whatever. Um, so there is like joy from that, but there's also like a kind of. Um, yeah, it's like a game. But it's also like a um, game being made out of someone being hung. And then you're kind of like subject to killing them if you don't know the answer. If you don't know it, like the, the back and forth of like guessing letters for it. It creates more, more body parts on the, on the piece. So the more you don't know. <laughs> no, I get you. I get you. And like, there's one where like there's like some of the clouds, like that like circles, the clouds and stuff, a like bubble cloud. But like, there's one that looks like kind of, it's like a kind of used, like a used condom or something. But I was like, if it's gonna go on the street, might as well have stuff that references like the street anyway. Like you see fucking condoms everywhere, like, and, you know, um, stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to like, I don't know, I think when, I think this whole thing about being like British Asian is kind of a bit weird as well, because it's like, um, it's the truth, but it's like, the, you know, it's, it doesn't need to be the truth, <laughs> basically. Um, cool. So you end with the banner wrapping around itself so it becomes illegible? Well, yeah, that wasn't planned. It was just the, the weather, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, it's all part of this yeah, idea so that you're kind of uh, denying kind of clear communication all of the time. Because well, I thought those, um, because we were in the festival, I was a small and really small entity. I had the license to really just use it as a test bed for, you know, so I had the privilege of like having the work up installed mm. um, and not worry about its kind of state of decay. Um, the drawings were on there to imply that they'd been the face, so that was always going to be... The balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then as soon as they're out there, they're just, uh, um, just you know, subject to the elements, I guess. Mm. Um, so I made that, all that stuff whilst it was, the festival was on, just to kind of use it as a, I guess as a studio or something, mm, because, mm. yeah, I don't know. I wasn't entirely sure how that was going to be framed, so I wanted to almost get like the kind of final say on the work, that it's meaning and stuff. Mm. Um, so that's, part, that's partly why the documentary thing's there. Um, but then but how do you feel now when you, I mean, it's, it seems quite a kind of brave act to include within that film 
the footage of you being quite cruel to your pet rabbit. And um, it seems to me quite a brave um, statement to, to include that footage. Um, can you sort of talk a little bit about why you, why you included it? How you feel about it? How you feel when you kind of look at it now with audience, audience reaction? I think it's, it's not something that I enjoy doing. Mm. Watching those videos, especially when, in this situation, but um, the with the rabbit thing, I put in bits of black because I was like thinking about how do I make this? Because then I didn't have to show like a, a proof to anyone before it got screened as well. Mm. So, um, well, which I thought was interesting. Um, so there was there are bits of black where you think what you think is going to be there. So it's <laughs> the awful kind of, thing happens to the rabbit. Yeah, so it's like, but then it's kind of, I mean, I don't know, I mean, like, in, I don't, you know, I don't live ethically, but do you know what I mean, in terms of... Yeah, I mean, we've so all, we've like, all done like, awful, I yeah, mean, it's so just, it's like, yeah. I mean... It's, it's, it's just it's completely about, honest. Yeah, but it's, it's also, it could be anyone, I mean, it, it could, you assume it's me, and it is me, but it's like, it could be, you know, for the purposes of, like, deconstructing the video, it could be anyone. Um, but, I mean, that's I what, that, uh, you know, your work seems to be very much about that, you know, actually confronting who you are, the ethics of who you are as a person, and the faith, all of the failings, and that actually you're almost kind of but, celebrating that as part of the work, that we have to kind of recognise what our weaknesses, we, we have yeah. to recognise what our weaknesses are. Yeah, because I think if there's a... If there's a social, if there's a history that you're interested in, which is about, say, inequality or subjugation or power things, um, then I, f I mean, it's it's more edifying, I think, the process of making the work to kind of somehow relate it to what you may, you know, uh, like previously, you know, assumed or mm. uh, what you, yeah, your preconception. What well, you've actually yeah. experienced yourself. You yeah. Mean, yeah. And also, I mean, I, that video was actually shown just a bit with the rabbits in, when I was a student, um, a friend of mine, um, Harry Mealy, kind of um, had a, an ongoing, like, little gallery in the locker, as a, in a locker, in the locker room, so he turned his locker into a gallery with clear perspex and, like, painted all the interior white, and every week he got someone to do something there, and he got the tutors to do it, so it's kind of a nice way of nice little exercise to kind of do stuff. And I showed just that rabbit bit. And then it, it, it banned, they got, they banned his gallery after like two days. Right. But it was kind of like oh, on the grounds of, because we went to Leeds Met, it's not an art school. Mm. It's kind of a, it's a big kind of metropolitan university. So all types of students were there. So it kind of like, so since then I always thought, oh, well, it's a shame that happened. But it kind of got me thinking, oh, well, you can show that in an art gallery, but you can't show it in, art school, so it's a stupid. Yeah. So I just thought, well, I'll reuse it somehow. And it's, it's open to lots of interpretation. Mm. And I thought, because the, the Glasgow International platform was the biggest thing that I had at the time, I might as well try and fit, fit it in with that. Mm. And then the whole narrative with the soldiers and the, the thing that the, there's two of them on the logo, and then there's kind of, yeah, this thing about regrettable kind of like past and um, subjugation, and then also, the constitutional censorship of all, you know, what people mm. watching the censor and watching the and all that stuff was part, part of it. Mm. Um, but I mean, as I've shown it more and more, I, it seems like it's mostly uh, males that kind of like find it amusing or find it kind of like, oh, that's. Yeah, they remember they, yeah, doing really something exactly like, like that to their pet rabbit. So, yeah. and that's, you know, that's kind of a part of the work as well. So. Mm. Um, I don't know if this maybe is a good point to open it up to the audience. Um, maybe somebody has a question to ask Hadi. Again. So I wonder what your mum's take on using thing, you know, using her own words and, and just kind of it's not too personal a question, your relationship to your mum and how that yeah, and to what kind of thing it Um because it's cartoon imagery. Um, I don't think they see it. They just don't. They just don't see it. It's like when I used to play rap music really loud. They, you can't hear the words because it's just. It's just. It's just a sound. I think you have to really pay attention. 
it's like you can put art anywhere, but you know, it will just get lost unless there's a kind of informed or invested interest into it, I think. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I mean, they must, I think like, um, as long as I'm not doing bad stuff, like to people in the real world, it's a matter. But um, I don't think they know what's going on, to be honest. I mean, they see the Sikh, uh, Sikh soldiers and stuff, but because it is religious um, imagery, and within, the, within that religion, there's violence being depicted all the time, it's, it's the same thing. It's not like um, sacrilegious. Because we're going to. For example, that, that term in the Bible, they wouldn't see that as. Well, they wouldn't see that as in the way that I'm seeing it. No, probably, no, probably yeah. not. I mean, I mean, my dad might be aware of like the, the, uh, the Danish cartoons, but I don't know if it's a, just different kind of worlds, yeah. I think. Like, but it's kind of like because yeah, there's you have to really invest into it from that from their perspective. I think. But do you other siblings? Do they portray it? What's their take? Um, I don't know. I just think they just. I think like I don't think they care that. I mean, not in a bad way. I just don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, like no, it's just like not their interests. So. Mm -hmm. Something we didn't talk about was the, the panels as well, which um, are deliberately kind of, again, um, quite cheaply produced. You sort of, you order them and they kind of arrive, and, but then once they've, they've, maybe you can just talk about the production process and what, and yeah, what, I mean, what, 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 they, what role they serve within the installation. I wanted to, because um, I was drawn to this, this, um, uh, this format, it's called a comic foreground, where you're probably familiar with it, it's um, kind of a seaside attraction, namely where you stick your head through a kind of a cutout of an idealised kind of scenario and pose behind it to get your photograph taken. Um, I kind of, I thought that might be a good format to kind of like work within. And I made one in a tourist kind of like destination recently, um, an outdoors kind of sculpture, um, in the shape of a kind of like uh, an anthrop anthropomorphic guillotine based on a drawing from uh, Croatia. Um, and I, I thought that they might, that could probably be kind of pared down into, or could be become a part of the vocabulary, but I haven't really like got to that state where I can mm. fuse it to, to a degree. But I think like there's a whole thing between the screen kind of like, uh, yeah, and then where the holes go, I don't know. It's just um, it's a bit it's a bit still muddy for me to be honest. But um, initially they were about, I guess, um, again within the, within this whole thing about accessibility or making kind of public art and making kind of um, people interested. I guess the way I've been working due to the projects, I've had that on my mind as well. Um, so referencing something which which could be an artwork, which or could be a, a public art thing, like the comic foreground. Um, yeah, and there's also all sorts of stuff. I mean, like this thing where, um, in within the contemporary art world, pictures surfacing of like you know um, people taking selfies next to like part indecent parts of big sculptures and stuff, and putting, and then they, they, you know things like that happening. So it's just like. It's this whole thing about um, how do you see the, the work? How should you see it? Mm -hmm. you the framing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the kind of thing I'm mm. interested in. Um, and you were, you were talking about um, maybe wanting to use this kind of conversation as a way to, kind of, to frame your work. Yeah, so I mean, in the past I've staged or I've got friends to film for me. But recently, I've had you know more proper type uh, interpretive videos to go alongside the things that I'm doing, and it was those interpretive videos that I was kind of reacting to mm. in the previous works. So it just seems kind of like um, it just seems kind of to make sense to you know, think about using it. Yeah. So half of what I'm saying is probably with that in mind as well. So yeah.
we got any more questions from the audience? Um, I was just going to give you it's about representation so kind of um, being privy to conversations with curators and stuff where yeah the, 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 it's good to get a balance with you know of different kind of things going on um, so but I can't you know make I can't uh, assume the position of everyone so it's like I've got you know so it's I try to incorporate as much as I can um, but yeah, um, I think this thing about maybe doing stuff that's kind of um, might come across confessional can have, you know, it's not straightforward kind of like a relinquishing of like um, problems. It's also a way of kind of like forestalling interpretation as well because it's like you're never really you're never really sure. I think um, what's a performance and what isn't, and within say the context of like war, perhaps you know, and the way that's kind of, um, I imagine to that like, be within a kind of institution like the military, um, it gets kind of blurred as well, and the same as religion, you know, be it or not, it's, it's, it's um, and it, even in even in even in within an art practice as well, because it's still quite a ritualistic thing. <clears throat> I find that name, so. Okay, you were talking yeah. about that sort of project that you did when you were still at Glasgow School of Art, where you were, got permission to put drawings up on, on a, a notice board, which was about kind of schedules yeah. and everything, just to sort of try and kind of get a different sort of, to test out what you could do and get a different, get a reaction to 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 your work a different yeah. context a, diff a different framing for the work yeah so um okay. that little one over there you said you made when you were at that school so i've got an image actually of oh that that's so this is a, so this is like this is it installed at the art school so it's a notice board where well there's two notice boards the one that it's on is where all the art the kind of the teaching information for the following week is posted up by the administrator and it happens every like you know Thursday or whatever at the same time and my studio's right next to that one so at the at that time I'd kind of like hear students kind of like queue up because the visiting lecturers and particularly the, you know the, the more kind of like established ones or artists would um, demand a queue so um, I thought it would be a good place to produce or to kind of show work and also a good exercise to be able to kind of come up with a different image a week um, so almost kind of like adopting a kind of um, the role that say a cartoonist would you know for, for you know, whatever um, and they're all kind of a bit some of them were like, topical to a degree some of them were just born out of sporadic reading that you know um, and they were like installed along with the other information, the official information by the admin person. Um, and it wasn't announced or anything. So eventually over a few weeks, it kind of started to arouse informal conversation. Um, and it became a way of short circuiting like the work and um, my kind of uh, um, intent, I guess, or kind of like what, what I was interested in in terms of viewing the viewing of work and what, you know how it can be viewed and stuff um, 
and also putting viewers into a position of a bit of yeah, a bit of a bit of self-reflection, I guess. Um, so that's it. Uh, yeah. yeah has anybody got any more questions? Yeah. Well, you call yourself a um, British Asian artist, and I wonder whether that limits your perception by the outside, or whether it kind of directs your reception. Um, I just, I just, I don't really, I let people call me that. I don't really say it myself, so um, because it's because it's true. But it's like, yeah, I'm the same thing. So, um, and also because I'm in a lot of the work. So it's like, um, it's quite clear that, yeah, it's like I'm playing off what, the, my mask, I guess, do you know what I mean? So, um, I think it does limit it, but then the problem is that it's, it's limited by the things I don't, I'm not interested in, do you know what I mean? Or it's like it's limited by things that, um, I think, um, are the issues, I guess, in this, or in a way, I don't know. It's, um, so you could call yourself an artist? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I don't choose to, if someone asks, says that to me, I don't choose to correct them. Yeah. Because it gives me license as well, so it's like, mm. and people say, you know, it's just press, it's just, it just happens quickly. Because I mean, you know, Okay, well, if nobody's got any more questions, I think we'll stop and um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hans.